As you can see, I've got a detailed sketch of the rose. We're gonna do our acrylics first. So I've got my regular acrylic paints. I'll mist them with the squirt bottle. I've also, of course, got my water and my foundation medium. There it is. We'll be using that later. We don't even need it right this minute. Let's start here with our, with our flat blender brush and dip that into some water. Okay, now you, you'll see the photo. And, and by the way, that's a photo that I took um, in my own rose garden. So, you know, you're free to copy it and use it however you need to for your own paintings. Um, I'm not going to do my backyard um, with the trees and the grass. Instead, I'm gonna do more like a close up dark bush just with big leaves. I think that will bring more attention to the flower, but you could certainly do it either way. Here's some sap green, yellow. I'm going to uh, mist the canvas just to kind of get things to move around a little. Sap green, cad yellow, a little yellow ochre, maybe just a touch of black. Darken that up some, okay. You don't need to be overmixed here. We definitely need some white to make that more opaque. This is just the beginning stages of, now be very careful, don't, don't erase that sketch. Go right around that sketch. You can come in with a, with a smaller brush there. Just the beginning stages. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a lot of this in with my acrylic, a lot of this background, just mush. And then I'll paint my leaves back over. And then if I want to, with my oils, kind of make a vignette or something, you know, with black or, or punch some holes in it or, make, you know, I can do extra things with my acrylic, or my oils, rather. I don't know if I said oils or not. My oils over top of this once this is dry. So I'm just looking for big, broad strokes. I don't care if, like, my brush strokes show through. I don't care. There, just a little bit more up here. That'll work. Kind of just quick and, and rough here. That's my one bud right there. Let me just hit the outline of this rose here. I did nothing more than a very basic, quick swipe or two with a pencil, just to, to show you there. Hey, there's gonna be a rose. It's actually going to be out of focus. So we'll not see a lot of the detail in it. Okay, now let's just get that filled in. Oof, my paint's already dry. Missed that. Continually missed it. I always have an air conditioner. Well, not always. Recently, I've had my air conditioner on because it's hot. There. And that, of course, dries out my paint very quickly. All right. The background is dry for the most part. Um, and if, you know, as I was drying, I noticed I missed a spot. That's why we sketch, right? So you can see when you miss a spot, that should be green there. And this should be green right here. So for anybody that thought that flower was a little big on that side, I would say that is why. Now, you can do just, see how I'm doing these little stabs like that? Nothing too crazy. This is just filler background leaves and whatnot. And we'll come back, you know, and glaze some oils over that and give it a little more definition. So I'm just pushing down, kind of wiggling and pulling away. See that? I don't really want much color on the stem. Just boom, like that. Leave it alone. We can we can mess around with it with oils. It, you know, doesn't really matter. Actually, the soft lighting is coming kind of from this side down. According to my, you can't really tell, but according to my photo. So I'm going to put a little more light on that side. Now I'm going to grab my tapered round brush. Oh, this is one of my favorites. Now we're going to we're going to paint this rose in without obliterating our sketch. And I'm looking for kind of a dark shade. I'm going to start here. I'm not going to I'm not going to just go crazy and cover this whole thing up. But see how you go right over that sketch. You can still see it. I'm just going to try my best. That's why I'm using this particular brush. I'm going to try my best to get some shading in there. So see how maybe I'll even make that a little darker. You could you know maybe go a little more. Now yellow ochre is opaque compared to cad yellow. Good. Okay, so let's just do everywhere that kind of has this darker yellow that we mixed up. I put a little more yellow ochre in it than I had before. Yeah, you know what? That's not perfect, but I love that we can still see our sketch. So let's allow that to dry before I just keep going over the same area over and over again. And let's jump down here real quick. I'm just gonna underpaint this rose also with some white and yellow.
kind of maybe a little darker here in the middle. There's some white. This is probably why we should have underpainted that rose. <laughs> a little more free. All right, so this is dried and you'll see, <laughs> you can see where my paint dried and became transparent. I can now see through it. And we're gonna, we're gonna need to go over that with another coat. We'll, we'll do that right now. Uh, take some white, some of our CAD yellow. No, not really any yellow ochre right this minute. Mostly just the white, the CAD yellow this time. No water, no water. Because what I'm gonna do is just make this more opaque by layering on one more time without water and with a lot of white, it'll cover that up. Some of this is just gonna need to be addressed later, but some of this I can get right now, just with the tip of the brush. This brush is getting to where it's a little too big for, for this sort of stuff, but I like the way it blends. You can of course smudge with your finger also. I'm looking over at my photo, anywhere I see a light spot, I'm gonna just try to get that in here established. Okay, anywhere that's kind of obviously light. All right, that's dry. That's very important. We're actually going to, you know, I also uh, washed out this brush really, really good. Soap and water, so it's nice and clean. We're going to be, you already know, we're going to be coating the canvas with some of our foundation medium. I'm going to start, <laughs> I don't want to drip on my foot. I'm going to start on my rose. Why? Well, because if I'm going to make a smudge, I don't want it to be in the rose. Let's do the other rose too. That is, if a little bit of my paint's not wet, or is wet, and I thought it was dry, and it lifts away. I do not want that in my rose, obviously. Now, why, why bother doing this? Well, it acts mostly like a varnish at this point. It acts like a varnish to, to protect this layer of paint from the oils that are coming on top. Well, not so much from the oils, but it's to protect it from you scrubbing with the oils. <laughs> this will dry out clear. I know it looks kind of Kind of milky right now. All right, so my clear layer is totally dry. I mean, really, really dry. So that's important to make sure. Now, I went ahead and put away the acrylics. And I brought out my oils. I don't have a lot of paint. We're not going to be using a lot of paint. And I've got my oil brushes. And I actually spent a few moments cleaning them out again since the last time I painted. Why is that? Because I really need them clean. We're working with white and yellow, and I don't want green in my roses. And I'm going to place down just right here in the corner, some of that dark. Just like so, looking at my photograph and copying where the location of the dark is. Yeah, that's good. It's hard to tell close up. Grab some clear gel and, uh, and add to this. What does that clear gel do? It helps you flow, helps the paint to flow more easily. See that? Okay. Right over here, I see a, I see a dark section. Yeah, that clear gel makes a difference. This here, good. This here, a little more of that. Anywhere you need maximum coverage as far as getting the, um, as far as getting the lines covered up to where we don't see them anymore, add more white, less clear gel. There, what you see is what you get with oils. You'll not, you know, you'll not have to worry about the lines showing back through. And if you embrace, you can kind of embrace the lines and use them all, almost as shadow in certain situations, not every situation. It certainly won't work on the highlight side. It will work on the shadow side. Now here is a clean little detail round brush. I'm going to grab some white and cad yellow. Lots of paint and it's mostly white. Very little cad yellow in that at all. I want to put a little clear gel, but ooh, <laughs> good thing there's not much paint on the canvas. As I scrape my palette across, see if they were doing a regular painting, that would have been not fun. So I've got, anyway, sorry about the distraction. I've got a lot of yellow and white in my brush. That's all I'm doing. All right, starting up here. I'm going to place that down. Oh yeah. And begin to bring all this together. Beautiful. I mean, it's, I'm totally okay with a little bit of texture here. That's pretty. Wipe my brush, reload. 
most of the paint's kind of out there on the tip of the brush where I can actually use it. I see a bright spot right there. Yeah, oh, that's good stuff. Some of, the, some of this you're gonna have to have texture. That's just all there is to it. Okay. Get some definition here. This is again my darker one. This is not my lighter one. Get some definition on that petal, the fold there. That looks good. See, it's the highlight that's really making this thing work. Mm -hmm. More paint. Now I'm actually gonna go to my lighter one because up here it's just mostly blurry white. Not really too concerned. I'm not going to do the whole thing in it. I'm just doing bits here and there and leave a lot of that just, yeah, like that. That's fine. You can see in the photo, it kind of just looks like that. A little more of a darker yellow if you want to just put up a, an extra thing here and there. This petal right here, perhaps. I'm just going to just going to tease it like this. I'm not like, oh, I'm going to blend. No, no, no. Look, how much of that brush am I using? Like a sixteenth of it just to soften, especially these larger petals. We're going to do this one opposite of that one. This one we started with dark, we ended with light. This one we're going to start with light and end with dark. Why? I don't know. Okay, here we go. I'm just going to start here in the middle and give myself a line. I'm not painting a rose so much here. I'm just, just bringing in a few squiggly shapes that kind of mimic the top of the petals. See how these petals look? So do these. You can kind of use mine, my, my painting as a reference to kind of show you oh, about where you would want some of your squiggles and wiggles. But to tell you the truth, it's not critical at all. You know, here's a shadow here, perhaps. I mean, I'm not doing anything special. Some more yellow, canned yellow and white. I really am not doing anything special. It just, it kind of looks like a rose. It kind of only looks like a rose because it's next to that one. I don't want the attention going to this rose at all. And I, I may even cover it a little bit with some foliage. I'm not sure because I don't, like I said, I don't want the attention here. Okay, continuing with my detail brush, I'm going to place in a um, little red and yellow. I want more of an orange. So cad yellow and red, a little white. I'm going to place in just a little detail here to this bud, namely kind of just some color. That's literally about it. Maybe some some cad yellow and white. You'll notice that my color variation, like I'm using the same colors, just slightly different colors. Plenty of clear gel. I actually see beginning, beginning to add more clear gel yet. What am I doing? I'm glazing. I'm just glazing. What this is going to do is it's going to create a, kind of a vignette effect where I really punch my dark. See, I can see my leaves through it. See that? And I will add more leaves on top of this, but see how I can begin to see some of my leaves over this. Be careful here because this is wet. So I'm doing these real fine. I'm just kicking, not straight in, but I'm actually kicking that brush down to get these finer bits. Okay, back to my highlight yellow green. Just, just something to mask the fact that all that roses, oh, there we go. It's pushed back into the painting a little better. So now I've got a roll of shop towels. And this is essentially like a paper towel, but they don't disintegrate like paper towels do. So like maybe right in here, right the edges of some of those colors. I like the colors, but you know, maybe, oh, wow. What is that doing? It's throwing it out of focus. Look at this. All I'm doing is rubbing it with my shop towel. It's throwing it out of focus. Oh, that's beautiful. Now, if you do that everywhere, you're going to lose the effect of it. But if we can do this just in select areas, I do like that clump being a little sharp there. Uh, don't mess up my rose, but see soft and oh, that's just amazing. What a difference that makes. Well, that wraps up our rose painting. It's amazing what you can get done with the acrylic base. So all you have to do is just put a little bit of oils on top to really make it to really make it stand out. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe if you're not already and click the like button that helps me out a lot. Stick around, watch a couple more videos and stay inspired.